I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is a nice Danish modern little uh, desk computer table thing here, the typical of what you might find at a yard sale or a thrift shop. It's not fancy, but it has really clean lines, simple, and a handsome teak veneer. Typically when you find something like this, there's always something wrong with it, and this one's no different. The top has all kinds of discoloration, a ring, a, a cube, it's got some discoloration in the back. I'm just going to refinish the top. This top should come right off. This is a typical kind of fastener you find on these pieces. It's a little thing that captures a stud, and you just need to turn it, you can see the opening there, and you just need to turn it 180 degrees. Okay, I don't think I need to use a stripper on this top. I'm hoping that just uh, acetone and some zero steel wool will do the job. All right, I let it dry overnight. It may not have been necessary, but I typically do that anyway. Now uh, I'm going to take 100 grit paper and let's see how it sands up. Uh, this is great because the color difference that I was so concerned about seems to be going away pretty quickly. You know, this is sanding up really well, but I can still see a faint outline uh, between the light and the dark there. Uh, I'm going to put a little thinner on it. Wow, it looks good, but I still think I can see a line there and a difference. I'm going to go ahead and treat this with the oxalic. I'm just going to use uh, our hot tap water. Our water is pretty hot. And then just a couple scoops of oxalic. It doesn't have to be a real strong solution. Oxalic acid can get rid of a lot of different stains that are caused sort of naturally by, in other words, like from water with minerals in it or from uh, exposure uh, to oxygen or other elements. Okay, now I'm just going to let this dry and then I'll rinse it off. All right, I've uh, let this dry overnight. And so uh, you can see it's got all this white powder all over it, which is the oxalic dry. Uh, you really can't tell what it's done or not done as far as the discoloration goes. So uh, uh, I'm going to rinse this stuff off really well. Well, the top looks, uh, looks really good. I can still see some of that outline, but uh, I'm going to let it dry and... Uh, then give it a good sanding again. Okay, the top is thoroughly dry. Uh, as I rub my hand across it, you feel a little fuzziness, and that's from the water raising the grain. So, although I'm going to sand this again with 100, first I'm going to take some 150, and I'm going to sand at a 45 degree angle just slightly to smooth it out. And that's because the water has raised the grain of the wood. Imagine that. If I go with the grain now, I'm going to push those fibers back in. But by sanding at an angle, I'm going to roll those fibers off and cut them off completely. All right, that's good for the 150. Now, I didn't want to have to sand this with 100 again, but I can still see a very faint outline in just a couple of places. Overall, it's pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to sand it again with 100. Uh, now this is a veneered surface. I'm sanding it pretty aggressively with 100. But I'm going to, you know, I'm kind of staying away from the edges till the very end. I want to make sure I don't go through. I'm, a, I'm kind of assuming that this has not been refinished or sanded before, and then I can do this. Okay, I, uh, after the 100, I sanded it with 150, and uh, I think it looks great now. I'm not even barely seeing that shadow line. So now for the first coat. So in the past, you may have seen when I'm working on an antique, I'll brush this uh, tongue oil on 
and just leave it on, uh, using it as if it's a varnish. I call it a varnish. Uh, this is different. This time I'm going to brush it on. I'm going to keep it wet for about 15 minutes. In other words, if I see any dry places, I'm going to add. And then I'm going to wipe it off. Man, I see, I see no sign of that, that shadow line that we were trying to get rid of. I think the uh, exolic and everything really worked. Now, <clears throat> I'm already starting to see dry places, so I'll just go back and add a little, keep it wet. Okay, this oil's been on here for about 10 minutes now. Uh, I don't see any more dry, dry spots forming, so uh, I think I can wipe it off. Okay, gotta let this dry overnight. Now, one final word about these rags that you use when doing during the oil finish: just get them out of the house, get them out of the shop. I'm gonna take this out, uh, drape it over a sawhorse outside. Uh, tomorrow it'll be dry enough. I'll throw it out. All right, I let this dry uh, overnight, actually two nights, and now I'm gonna apply the second and final coat of tongue oil. I'm gonna use satin. I'm gonna brush the coat on, and then while it's still wet. I'm going to go over it with 4-0 steel wool. The idea of the steel wool is just to uh, make it really smooth. Sometimes I use black, uh, wet or dry, 600 paper. This time I just chose to use steel wool. And then I'm going to pat it off with the rack. The idea behind the padding is just now that I don't want to leave a film, uh, so to speak, on this top. Patted it off real gently. It looks nice and even. Now we're going to see what it looks like tomorrow. And just a reminder, this rag and this steel wool are going outside. Do not put the steel wool in the trash can. It'll burn like crazy. Okay, this is dried overnight. And um, I think it looks good. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it. Uh, much more than when the first coat dried, and, then, and that matches the base. It doesn't have a lot of sheen either. What I'm going to do though, it's got a few little nits on it, and I'm going to go over it with steel wool and the bees wax polish. But uh, first I'm going to assemble it. So I'm going to go over the whole case with the beeswax polish and then I'll do the top. Well there you go, a nice little teak uh, computer desk or TV stand, $15 and a couple hours of labor. Very useful piece and it, it looks pretty good.